Oh, and then she had, oh, she lost her boyfriend. Oh. <laughs> lonely. I'm so lonely. You know what mommy did? Mommy turned stark raving mud. My God, I was completely. <laughs> After that, I said, oops. <laughs> I hope not too many people saw this. And I, had, I had a hard time to get that girl to do anything in the household. Yes, before I would go over to my bed. Yo, my so, <laughs> Yes, she little old me. One got my bed are sitting. And my Yumi would always be like, yeah, cry me now, cry me now. <laughs> and make me drop asleep. I stop, stop. I'm playing her ear. she wake me up back on. <laughs> girl Mel welcome back to my channel today we are here with mommy so I already know so it's another story time with mommy story time with mommy mommy <laughs> so as usual mommy is going to take over you know the last time me and my Yumi took over and showed you a little bit of our martial art part of our lives and I don't know if mommy has anything to add to it because she didn't speak the last time. But yeah, she will be taking over on this story time. Okay guys, so mommy, go ahead. Yeah, disclaimer. The stories that I'm going to tell in this series are my experience, my truth, and my point of view over the past 38 years that I have been in Jamaica and it's in no way intended to slander any person the culture of Jamaica or the island as a whole Hi Mel to lovelies It seems like a long time since I have done the last story time I don't know why um, Well, uh, adding anything to Capoeira doesn't really make sense I was uh, very often with them uh, as the wife of the professor, the, the capoeira prof, she had two small children so I quite often ended up babysitting the children while they were uh, uh, having some uh, events like in, in, performances. in performances in a town or on a, uh, uh, on a feast or something. But that was mostly my input and I, of course I love to watch it because I think it is a, a very, very elegant kind of of being able to defend yourself in case, you know, because uh, historically the Brazilian black people that were in slavery at the time, years and years ago, um, actually invented this form of dance, fight dance, uh, because what happened, they were not allowed to officially learn how to fight. So they kind of decided, okay, we are going to put it in some kind of a dance move. And, and that thus the, the, the instruments and the singing. So they could sell it to the uh, slave owners or whoever was supervising as, oh, we are just like having some fun. Whereas in truth and in fact... I mean, if you do capoeira right, uh, you can. You are able to kill somebody with it. You go with certain moves with your legs that you can do, and if the the speed alone, like when they spin around and do certain moves, and if you kick somebody like that, it can be extremely dangerous. So officially, that was never allowed, and I found the philosophy behind it very interesting. Because basically, it was a very peaceful way and uh, a playful way to basically uh, withstand the pressure of slavery and I, I found the philosophy very very interesting and very encouraging as well like oh we are not allowed officially to do certain things so we kind of hide it behind something completely different and and in the end it is as effective as if it would be openly 
trained as martial arts yeah so somebody <coughs> also commented this on that video as well and they said that the martial art aspect of it basically already existed which you could figure mm -hmm. but because they weren't allowed to practice it out in the open that's right. the disguise so that's where the dancing mm -hmm. part comes in and the instruments as well and the yeah. singing basically <coughs> because that way they could say hey all we do is we play some music and we we kind of make our movements you know so officially nobody could really object mm -hmm. and i i find that uh, uh, very genius because i think there's a there were a lot of situations over the world in in countries where people got oppressed and had to find a way to do what they needed to do in a, a hidden way and and without offending anybody without violence in the sense no violence involved really you know because basically capoeira is self-defense plus if need be hey i can mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> give it to you good mm -hmm. so that that philosophy i found extremely uh refreshing too so i was kind of happy that my children decided to do it and they did it throughout the entire time we were in germany and luckily i had my little jobs on the side that we could afford the fees as well um we had a lot of fun we would drive around especially in summer here and there because there are some town fests and some some uh how you call it other events and they would request the group to come and of course it would look good because all of them in their white clothes and their belts and mm -hmm. and you could see direct and then the birimbau the the instrument which alone no a lot of people wouldn't know it and you how would that play like that you know it was for them that alone was amazing for many people so it was a lot of fun we had that's what i can add to you have something so before mommy continues um i found out that there is well we well i mentioned it in the story time already but there is a capoeira group here in, in jamaica kingston. in kingston so i thought that i would you know get in contact with them and see mm -hmm. if me and my yume could just go there for maybe a class or something and record while we're there so you can actually see um like a training session of what it would look like here in jamaica we are used to our teacher in germany you know each teacher there's a basic there's a base to it but you know some people put their little flares onto stuff and you know the whole training concept and stuff can be different so um if you guys are interested in me and my yumi well the whole family would go but yeah, us really going good, yeah. us going to kingston to take part in capoeira here in jamaica and then let me know then i will get that video done for you guys okay okay so otherwise well last time uh i stopped more or less uh that we were in the process or not even we uh yosha was in the process to return to jamaica because at our last visit we had in jamaica which was early in 2007 uh, not only did he make his driver's license in Jamaica, but also we were starting to look around for a location where we might be able to open a place. And we turned lucky and in one big mall in Port Antonio at the time we could find our underground floor, there was a small shop uh, available. So we decided to figure out and find out if we could get it and what were the stipulations and stuff. So. We met with the manager of the building and, and we did meet before already, which is always good in Jamaica if you know people, you know. <laughs> so basically we talked about it and, and uh, agreed on the rent price and it wasn't, I don't even remember how much it was, but it wasn't that, that bad neither. <clears throat> and basically uh, it was said, all right, by uh, June, July, I think uh, we would start and take the shop and now to start pack and to start organize because in germany you know it's not like you can pack a barrel and send over oh no 
in Germany only have uh, pallets. That is the smallest anti well, uh, unless you have normal packages, which cost a fortune. But uh, anything a little bit bigger, bigger start with the size of a pallet. And then you would have to, of course, to find the people to to uh, send it because in Germany, for example, the main harbor to send things anywhere in the world would be Hamburg. And Hamburg, again, is about uh, 300 kilometers away from where we live. And then to... In hours? In hours, uh... Well, you know we have the German highway. The German highway people drive fast. So it would be about three hours drive. If if everything worked alright. Three to three and a half hours drive. So first now to pack everything, then to send it to Hamburg and then from Hamburg to Kingston and stuff and then of course then here to pick it up. Uh it was a bit of a hustle to be honest, because it looks like in, in Germany not too too many um, private people would send things to Jamaica. I mean, I guess all other countries maybe, but Jamaica was not that usual. And um, even this time, right, when we came back and sent a pallet, we, we had to search around. Luckily, I had a friend who had an address of somebody in Hamburg who would, you know, so... It, it it all worked I mean, out, but, but it's my, not that, that easy. My thing was just that because it was personalized items, why they didn't want to Yeah, send but in it. our case it was too, basically. We wouldn't send it as any business uh, goods. We would oh. send it as personalized because Yosha would have his stuff. But they said it. they used to do it. It's just that now it's too much, too Yeah, it is, it is really getting complicated. It come like nobody really want to deal with people business anymore they only want uh, uh, um, personal business uh, personal <laughs> business yeah they personal they, they, they only want really business business yeah. you know and it makes things of course a lot more complicated now we finally got everything packed up and uh, yasha would when you say we finally got everything packed up everything like what well, we did buy goods, of course, or, or clothes for the boutique mm -hmm. and, and some bags and belts and we didn't deal with shoes. We just had like real and I mean really, really pretty clothes and things that you could mix and match as well, you know. Uh, we had some little decoration items in there because I remember that in Jamaica it's not that that easy to get certain things. So you would see, first of all, it, whatever you buy, it's so much cheaper in Europe or America. We all know that. So set, that we had to send a pallet already would make sense to put in as much as possible from our side of the world uh, for a much, much cheaper price and then um, bring it in here. And basically it was like i was so i was jealous i, I, I wanted to come too but at, in 2007 i wasn't ready i was not ready yet i i didn't even know we were basically throwing out a hook seeing and hoping that if you shall go there and start what he is going to do and it would be hopefully successful that eventually I would find a way to, to go back. But it was like... I don't know, it was... It, I, I was jealous on one side, on the other side, as I say, I was not ready and she was in school at the time and I did not really draw her out at that point in time neither. Yeah, Although that in, changed a few months later. <laughs> I was in, well, if it was beginning of 2007, I was in sixth grade still. Mm -hmm. Right. But when we eventually left, I was in seventh grade. Yeah. Well, I mean, like so many times in our lives or in my life, I didn't really plan. You know, because I always found out whatever you plan, it never work out anyhow. So I stopped planning long ways ahead. I, I'm a pretty spontaneous person, you know. If, if I learned, and I think it's a very important lesson to listen to, to learn... You have to be open for things that are brought towards you. 
that might be something as completely unexpected it might be something you have been waiting for for a long time but as soon as something approaches you and you have your mind and your heart open to at least look into it and maybe listen to it and maybe say hmm that sounds good or that looks good or my heart tells me yes and i'm i'm the definite heart person if my heart tells me yes i'm doing it and i don't even think anymore and and certain times in my life all the time when i always went back to jamaica it's always my heart to, told me to go mm -hmm. you know and in 2007 my heart wasn't ready my heart did not say no you have to go now my heart was saying eh, wait a bit so that's what I did because I did learn to listen to my intuition, to my uh, uh, feelings, if things are right or wrong. And and to be honest, right now I'm I'm we are f more than 14 years even after that decision again. And I can say whatever decision I took over all those years in my life that came from my heart and that came spontaneous sometimes. They were always good choices always and up to this day if I see something coming towards me I look directly into it and say <laughs> what does what is my heart saying no <laughs> you know and if my heart for example one day might tell me that something turn up and my tell is Sabina move or do something else or start something new or whatever I will do it all at my age because I think it's never too late to develop and and get forward in life and e be, even if it be only for your own personal uh, enrichment mm -hmm. you know not even gain enrichment that you your character your personality your experiences whatever you have in life might profit from it because I always felt sorry for people who had been so set in their ways, you know, completely set like, Ooh, I know already what I'm going to do in 20 years and when I'm 65, I'm going into the pension and then I'm going to do this and, and it's like, hmm, first of all, you don't even know if you will be reach pension age, you know, because I know quite a few people that barely reach pension age and they started to enjoy their pension time and bloop, they dropped it, you know. And I saw that too often, so I said to myself, no, I would love to live a life already until such time where I, a life that I like, a life that I can identify with. Mm -hmm. And seeing my, um, my, my spontaneous decisions, uh, I pretty much had a life that, that uh, I was very content with. Only when things were taken away from me or uh, which I still wonder which lesson I should have learned there. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. But of course I was extremely disturbing and, and not good. And the time in Germany for me was basically a waiting time. I was sitting there all these years trying to figure out how to get back to Jamaica. How to start my independent life again. I mean, I have been in Germany all these years now. I uh, partly will live off welfare. Basically, what I could say, I had a roof over my head. I had food in my fridge. I had a little money to spend, not much, but enough. Uh, I was safe. I didn't have to wonder what I would eat the next day. Where would I get the money? I had nothing to wonder about. I had nothing to worry about, really. The problem... I got bored stiff. Yeah, that's not a life to live. That is not a life to live. I mean, sorry, but I cannot just sit back and wait for the, the welfare money to come in and then in the beginning of the month I can go shopping and do this, that and the other and for the rest of the month I sit low and no, mm, not me at all. So we needed to to find a way out and i tried the whole time to think and rethink and double think and try some other solutions <laughs> and think. as i was telling in in a previous uh, um mom story time 
I've I had this uh, a friend that wanted to move to and and we started to develop this plan and that plan and that plan and something always happened that it never worked out and it was like really frustrating so seeing that Yosha would be willing to start here and and come over and basically set a foundation again uh, was a very very good thing I think for the whole family fleet. plus Nikki was here too if you remember at the time a young father and uh, I was happy to see the two boys together in, in one country and then eventually we would follow so yeah Yosha left now um, his apartment there where he was living in was free of course when when he left and then Mayumi decided, oh, I want to move in the apartment. So, Mayumi, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mayumi. Mayumi drove me crazy. Because that girl, I don't know what happened to her. After she had school and finished the one school and before she started the other school, she was just like in her room hanging around. Oh, and then she had, oh, she lost a boyfriend. Oh. You know what I had to deal with? From morning to night, she played one song and one song only. Lonely, I'm so lonely. The whole day, you know. I almost got mad. I mean, lonely is only how long? Like five minutes or so? And then on repeat for eight hours, ten hours? I, I was almost ready to go in that room and kill her. That, but was, seeing, that was when we were still living in the same apartment. Yeah, and when we still live in the same apartment. And mind you guys, me and I share one room. Right. <laughs> so. Plus, them were quarreling constantly. I mean constantly. Big sister versus small sister. And, and she was suffering because Mayumi was really miserable. And what she did too, she would not move a finger in the household, right? I mean, it was like every time when, when we ask her to wash dishing or dishes or do anything, not you, Mayumi, mm. she, she made up her face. And, and, and I remember one situation that was actually on the Christmas market. Well, the last year we were there, Christmas market. Um, I was at the store. And Mayumi passed by and, and we start to talk a bit and then she suddenly looked at me and said, Oh, mommy, I have so much laundry to wash. When, when are you going to start a machine? You know what mommy did? Mommy turned stark raving mud. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was in that star and we start shouting at her. I, I, was, I was really so pissed. You know, because that girl was... What, 17, 18, 18 at the time, or 19 already, I don't even remember. We are 19, easily, right? And, and that girl come to me, who stood every day for 10 hours on that Christmas market in the freezing cold, and come to me and ask me when me start a machine at home. And she could very well do it by herself. <laughs> and not like she don't know how to do it, you know. My God, I was completely, <laughs> after that I said, oops, <laughs> I hope not too many people saw this because I was Did you so curse much. her in German? I don't even remember what I did, but I was really. Probably. I think maybe a mix, you know, our I mix, like, our usual mix, you know. I feel like when mommy gets upset, she talks more in German than... Yeah, well, it's like I can let it's it your, out better it's your, mother, it's your mother tongue, so it's natural. Exactly. So that happened all the time. I had I had a hard time to get that girl to do anything in the household, right? And, and even in the room. I mean, that room always looked like a bomb exploded in there, which I had a rule. As long as the children were big enough, I would not trouble their room. I mean, if they want to live in filth and dirt and unkempt and whatever, none of my business. Come out, close the door, I don't want to see it. <laughs> I don't. Well, if it starts smell or if some animals start to run around in the place, of course, I would interfere. But it didn't get that bad. But basically, hey, you are old enough, take care of your own stuff. 
you know, including her too. They shared a room, the two of them. I don't know, was it sometimes uncomfortable for you or didn't you even I realize? Don't, I don't even remember too much of the... the because I didn't really stay in the room like that. She was always locked up in there and then so I was in the, in the living room, room with you and stuff. Kitchen. And at that point, I was still such a mommy's girl that before, when it was bedtime, I would always be in her bed at first and I had to drop asleep in her bed yeah. first. And then before, I would wake her and say, go over. Yes, before I would go over to my bed. Yo, my so, mommy. So, <laughs> yes. Mommy girl. So that was Seriously, our night long, long routine. Mm -hmm. For every night, so I really wasn't in the room like that because even I didn't really have much toys in there or anything like well, that. We, that I would yeah, you didn't play have any with much so. toys anyhow, you know? And <clears throat> we had, well, Yasha, I think Yasha and Nikki built us a bunk bed. And the only thing that she would always annoy me with is she has this thing where she would like when somebody plays in her hair. And basically, the bunk beds were like a L shape like this. So I would sleep here, and she would sleep here. Yeah. So our heads are basically side by side. And imagine little old me, one guy my bed are sitting, and my Yumi would always be like, "Yeah, cry me now, cry me now." <laughs> and make me drop asleep. I stop, stop. I'm playing her ear. She wake me up back on. I was like, girl, seriously? <laughs> and I'm I'm like probably 12, 11, 12, somewhere around there. She would not leave me be because <laughs> she wants comfort. And I was the only person there to give her the comfort. But I don't, honestly, I don't remember much of, I only remember her playing that song day in, day out. Oh. And being like, Up to now, me can't hear that song. The <laughs> Oh, she could bring back that memory vividly <laughs> all the time. The press kinda, you know. Oh and, my god, yeah. Um, she in that time wasn't in that time too where she had low iron or something, so she was constantly sleeping as well. That could be, yeah. So that's basically all I remember. That yeah, song, she's her sleeping, sleeping. <laughs> and, and, and me and so <laughs> and me having to play in her here. Anyhow, in the meantime, after after this lonely, I'm so lonely phase, uh, <laughs> she had another boyfriend who was a Jamaican uh, working for the uh, British Army in Germany, and uh, Bielefeld had been a British Army uh, point since after the war. Our area was for the British, further down French, and uh, like Frankfurt, and even further down was the uh, uh, American soldiers so but we had the british ones so he was working and that's how they met and and then uh when yosha moved out of the apartment where he was living she decided i want that apartment and and her boyfriend would pay for it because he was earning a fair salary i don't know what his position was in the army at the time and he would not even be around that often either because he was like even I think even in, in, in Iraq or so at the time or uh, uh, sent abroad uh, uh, pretty frequently and came back for a short period of time, would go again. Um, so she moving into that apartment coincided as well with her time, uh, the last school she did where she was doing social helper and so she would go to school and then after um, take care of her little apartment if her boyfriend was there they would have a nice time there and stuff and then I vividly remember my very first visit there after she moved out right mind you know she never will move a finger in my apartment right never ever when I reach her house now and, and she opened the door oh mommy take off your shoes you know me just mop the place it's it's very very clean and I looked at her and said who are you and what did you do in my room? <laughs> <laughs> and that was my first reaction and the second reaction was damn what was I all those years for her then a maid or something because she would adamantly almost refuse to do anything in the house and now I come to her first own apartment and trust me that place was extra clean there was not a dust pick anywhere. 
the floors were clean, the kitchen was clean, the bathroom was sparkling. And I looked around me and I fell away. And I said, but wait, you couldn't help me in my house with the, if my house would have looked like that because you helped out, I would have been glad mm. and happy. So that was amazing. I mean, it, well, it was on one side, like I said, it didn't, I felt away, but on the other side, I said, well, at least now that she is on her own, I know she can manage. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of a little bit proud of that because I was despairing at home. Because that girl at the time, she was 19 or 20 and, and, and she wouldn't do anything. And I said, oh my, what did I do wrong, dear God, what? <laughs> and now I saw it works. It still could get better. <laughs> she yeah. could take care of her own house and it would look good and not be like in a nasty mess. So that was uh, one of the little things that uh, <coughs> occurred to us at the time. Now, next time when we are talking, Yasha will tell you a bit of how he uh, started to build up the shop here. And uh, I don't know, did he did he say he found some pictures or something? That would have been great. But he I'm didn't not sure. send anything to Okay, me. we have to find out. Uh, anyhow, uh, that would that is something I would let leave to him to talk about. So we are moving on a bit more in the year and 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 going on and finally we we reached the year two thousand eight. And as I told you before, I'm listening to my heart, and my heart was telling me it's time to go. It's time to go. It's not even that that the shop, the boutique would be such a success or something. No, actually it was uh, really slow. Although everybody came in there admiring how it looked, mm -hmm. admiring the clothes and the clothes were not overpriced, but for some reason people were not that, that interested in buying. So, of course, we we had our regular sales, which would uh, <clears throat> basically keep Yosha alive and, and pay what he needed in the months. And then uh, I would have to replace some clothes, of, clo of course, because when you sell, you cannot only sell, you have to restock the place. But basically, it would have never been enough to feed the whole family. So, in the middle of... I don't even know what time it was exactly. Yosha uh, mentioned that the store beside him was empty. Now, some pe the people moved out. And it was actually two stores, two small stores, one beside the other. <clears throat> and he saw that and then uh, he said, Mommy, look here, the, the, the shops are empty. Uh, why don't we rent them? And, and then I said, well, what do you want to do? And then we got the idea to do a cafe which basically meant I would buy a coffee machine a good one and bring over uh, or send over uh, and we would start to do little snacks here and there and, and then suddenly it occurred to me well why I'm not going back to my old 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 roots for to this thing that I had done remember I had the very 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 first pizza place in Port Antonio so I said, well, it looked like we have to make pizza again on the side with the cafe. And that's when uh, we decided, okay, it's time for me now to go back over. We would actually close the closed door uh, because, as I was saying, it didn't really work. So before we would buy more stock and restock the place, we much rather would decide to close this one and rent the other two places and see what we could do with them. But didn't that close after we got there? What? The closed door. Yeah, because we, at, at first we were there for a little while, but because we, I think we couldn't get to shop right, right away or something. There was something that kept us up. So we did keep that for oh. the time being, but not long. Mm -hmm. Because we went there in May and I think we closed the shop sometime in, in summer and then we renovated the other side mm -hmm. and we opened that in October. 
And guys, that was how Yoshkafe was born. That is how Yoshkafe was born because we were looking for a name and I don't even know how we came about that but for some reason because it was basically Yosha and me who would start that and do that and I said but Yoshkafe is kind of sound good makes sense and mind you again you know we were the the, the the forerunners again because there was not a single cafe called cafe in Port Antonio not one mm -hmm. now <laughs> now you have several places that call themselves cafe without knowing what cafe really means because none of them really sell coffee none of them we would have coffee and cake which is what uh, in Germany traditionally a cafe would have pastries and coffee and chocolate and tea and other drinks of course but that is basically historically a cafe so what we did we brought a little German lifestyle over to Port Antonio again very first people who opened an, a cafe and well, that is uh, something we would talk about next time, I guess. How how we set it up and how yeah, we Yeah, well, the it. details of that will be mentioned. The details in... would be another story time. <clears throat> um, so, yeah. But for you guys who don't know, we still currently have Yash Cafe going on. Yep. So, it's survived. In another place, but the same name. And yes. the same menu. <laughs> but... It survived what, 14, 14 years. years and still thus, going thus far. Still going. Um, so yeah, um, and for people who might be confused about the timeline, we were forced to leave Jamaica in 2002, Two. and basically in 2008, we moved back. So we, we were, moved back, Yosha, yeah. 2007. Nikki moved back already, I think, in 2004 or five yeah so basically me and mommy were in germany a total of five years yeah so five and a half years all in all yeah so <coughs> that was basically the time period of me um that was the only time within my you know what do you say uh, up until my adult life that was like the only long period that I actually lived outside of Jamaica yeah because all the other times we visited yeah, yeah. twice before that was it two time or one time one no basically only once mm -hmm. I only visited once before that yeah with when uh, the time with Omi yeah okay so I was only one other time in Germany before that so I really was you know more I lived most of my life in Jamaica so when she came to me and say hey you want to move back for me it was of course that's home so let's go home <laughs> let's go sure home <laughs> um, well it was a it was a difficult age because when we finally left you were 13 yeah and 13 of course being in the best teenage years and then uh, she had found some friends in school and 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 in Capoeira and around so it's not like she was isolated or or didn't have, have any social contacts or so and Germany after all became partly home for you as well right yeah I had I had a nice you know five years there wasn't wasn't a bad life for me at all um, but still there was just always this feeling that Jamaica is more home than Germany so that was what I was also comfortable with doing yeah because honestly if she had said no i don't want to leave germany then i would have had to bite in the sour apple <laughs> as we say in germany <laughs> and uh stay until she at least finished school or, or was 18. so she spared me another <laughs> five years in germany thank you so um yeah that is how we attempted to start a new life for the, I think it was the fourth or fifth time for me in Jamaica. <laughs> Should not give up on Jamaica, people. Should give up. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that will be it for today's story time. Thank you guys so much for checking it out. 
please remember to like share and subscribe if you haven't already and we will see you well when you're seeing this video we will be seeing you tomorrow <laughs> on the live for two hours no genius not three two hours <laughs> so yeah check us out on the live if you haven't already and guys remember for the people for the subscribers who haven't showed their face the last time please remember on the live tomorrow friday live marco is you me talking let's show a face yeah whoever is due is due tomorrow. <laughs> right? <We're better> ready. <laughs> so um yeah we have this little thing going on now where we are actually getting to see subscribers faces so that's amazing and awesome so yeah guys thank you as usual and we will see you in our next video bye, bye.